Welcome back everyone. Today we're looking at the new Rotomaker release. This is going to be V3. Can't see it on this page right now, but it will be there by the time you'd get to see it. So this is going to be a simple update. Obviously, if you follow, you would have seen the live portrait update, which just came out. So this is going to basically be updating us with a new method, which is this workflow right here. And it's bloody amazing. So what I'm going to do is show you how to use Rotomaker Combine Video BG. So basically, just to give you the lowdown, we'll have a look at the joiner first because we've already seen that before. It's already in other parts of Roto Rotomaker. Um, this is the joiner. You will have seen it before because it's in other workflows. Essentially, once you've made all of your videos, because we have to make them in parts, obviously, we don't want to blow our uh, computers up, right? So. We make our videos in parts and then we load the parts in. Now, because of the way that the saving system in Rotomaker works, as long as you match your project name across all the workflows in Rotomaker, as long as you put the same thing here, all your files will be organized into the same space. Now, this is going to be categorized as stage four. So all of these files will go into stage four and they'll be they'll be organized with your project that way. Now. You know what this is. You load three parts and it puts them all together. Very easy, very simple. So this is an AI generated character, obviously, using the same motion guide that I use for my own overlay. Um, it's me. So here I am. Um, obviously, that's not me, but whatever. <laughs> Basically, this is my... Um, some AI generated video that we've made in the past. I think I upscaled it, so it was good for use. Right. And uh, like I said, if we come and take a look at the actual magic here. So let's just say no and yes. So this is the same process without the live portrait. You have seen it in the last video, but if you didn't, we'll go over it again real fast. I've made it nice and easy to use. So here, what we do is we put our project name. If you've used any of the Roto Maker workflows, you know that you've got a project project name and you put that in there and that will make sure that all of your files are stored in the right place. I've probably said that before, but I really need to hit that nail home. OK, so here we have it. We do skip frame count. Now, right now it's on 900 because I've been using it, but typically you'd want to leave it at zero to start off. The offset is for your layer. Now, right now, I've made it go 128 to the right and 128 down, mostly to indicate to you that that's the directions that they will go. Now, you might not want to. You can just set it to zero and it will line up perfectly as you might as you want it to. OK, but I just wanted to show that you've got some ability to shunt the overlay. So as you can see on the final video, I'm over on the right and a little bit down, which is you know, what you'd be used to if you were watching one of my videos. So, you know, now we've got the ability to just do it all in gen, which is amazing because, you know, getting away from relying on Adobe products for stuff is quite cool. We can get it all in a workflow. That's amazing. So here we have my video input. Now, I've also given you like a traffic light system. So green would be go once you've got that. So red, stop. What frame rate are you using? If you're using 24, put 24. If you're using 30, use 30. You know, whatever frame rate you want to work with, put your frame rate there. Get ready to go. Orange light. This is the maximum number of frames it's going to do every time you hit Q prompt. I find with my 4090, I'm barely ever even touching 40% VRAM, even with 900. I think because the way this is done, it's kind of breaking it up and then putting it back together again. It doesn't seem to just get a, like a huge job because you have a lot of frames, but there is a method to this madness. OK, so 300 frames is 10 seconds at 30. Yeah. 600 frames is 20 seconds at 30. 900 frames is 30 seconds at 30. OK. And if we start this off at zero, well, actually, I, I walk onto the screen and turn around, which takes about two seconds. So we start at 60 so that I'm just standing there talking. Obviously, this is a video of my uh, overlay. Now, it's not transparent, though. 
it's a square which has been prepared with no um no transparency okay so we've set our skip frame count all right that's just for this video all right now this video is about 45 seconds long so if i skip two seconds there's a good 30 seconds in the middle before i walk off i just want to explain like why the frames are set the way they are because you know so i walk on for two seconds and then i walk off for two seconds it's about 45 seconds long so there's probably about 40 seconds of me standing and talking in this clip right so if I use 900, that's 30 seconds. That's safely going to be me talking and standing in the same spot, right? 30 seconds is a lot. And what we can do is we can use the same 30 seconds over and over again, right? Now, when we get to this video, we start at zero for the first queue, but then for the second queue, we add 900 frames because this is a minute long. So that means that I can easily get another 30 seconds with the same overlay, right? Now, this is very fast, so I don't even need to trip. If I just say zero there, 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 I'm gonna change it to white guide two, so it doesn't complain about the files already existing. Whoops. Okay, so we'll just go white guide two, and change this one to white guide two. Now, obviously you might be thinking, well, hang on a minute, where did you get this? I showed you how to do that in a previous video. And where did you get this? Well, this could just be your overlay character, like the one I showed you. Um, what was it? Like this guy. It could be your generated character that you've made with Roto Maker. I've just changed it to this guy because, you know, he's recognizable. It's me. So what I'm going to do is take my video and then I've set everything up. So stop 30 frames. Yes. Max frames, 900. That's 30 seconds of this. We've set to zero. We've set to 60. It would be zero. But as I said before, I want to exclude the walk-in. Okay. And now we queue it. And it's actually surprisingly fast. I thought this would take forever, but it doesn't. So off it goes. It's actually really impressive to see how quickly it's doing uh, matting for a good, like I said, it's 30 seconds. So I'm going to skip it, but I just want to show you. Look at it go. Oh, wait, what's it doing? It's loading this one now. Okay. So in a minute, it's going to ask again. So there we go. Image resize done. Now it's doing the matting. Remember, that's 600 frames at 1,024 by 1,024. How are we doing? Well, it's quick anyway. I don't want to waste time on the video, so. Okay, so it took about a minute. Now it's adjusting the layers, and once it's adjusted, both the images and the mask, which is obviously offset by us. Uh, it's then going to put everything together with composite from mask batch. And then you get this, which is going to be, you know, your lovely video over uh, with your person over the top. Now, obviously, that video could be a corridor being walked down and in front could be a close up of a character talking. OK, it's very simple to make scenes when you can actually do two animated layers and then put them together. Obviously, the rotoscoping is essential. So far, the best for speed is the Brie AI matting. Now, obviously, uh, I'm going to be doing a collection of everything which can do this, and then we'll do a comparison. That's planned for the future. So until that video lands, this is pretty much everything, because what we've got here is we've got background video, which could be anything. That's up to you. And then we've got foreground video, which again, could be anything. That's up to you. So I've demonstrated how it could be a person standing in front of a background. And then I've also demonstrated how that could be any person as well, because we can use the same uh, idea to drive the motion with our own acting, our own, you know, we get in front of a camera and just stand there and then put it in the back in front of you. All you need to do is have an idea and get out there and do it. So like I say, I hope these tools help you. 
Um, I include the joiners and things like that just for convenience. Obviously, I know you might have a tool which you can just drop a video into and it's very easy to do it like that. But we try to make it possible and comfy wherever we can because then you can automate it and make it part of a much larger process, which is always a great idea. So what's it doing? It's still doing the layer transform. Okay, that's fine. It is 600 frames, you know, you've got to give it some credit, right? So the idea being that you have a long video, it doesn't have to be AI, it could be real video. Um, and then you're going to increase this by the number of max frames in each batch. So for example, if I know there's like 10,000 frames in there, and I know my loop is 900 long. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go zero, Q, 900, Q, 1800, Q, 2700, Q, 3600, Q, and so on until I get to the maximum number of frames in the video background, right? Okay. So that's pretty much it. But I just wanted to show you that this is like flawless um you know video overlay uh you do get the occasional glitch with the edge of the mask being a bit white um but i'm pretty happy with it and like i said it is possible to do upscaling on the frames before and after and or after but upscaling video frames gets a little bit crazy and often you might actually lose some detail so it's best to try and take care of that in the in this generation stage if we can get us get the best we can um and then video upscalers can maybe help us that's that's the idea here so pretty short one actually compared to the rest but there's only one new workflow in this pack you've still got the v1 and the v2 pack contained in the v3 pack so you will still have all the tools um i hope i've explained everything here for you guys Remember to put the project name in, otherwise your files will become hilariously disorganized. Um, and just to give you an idea, you go output, Rotomaker, and you'll find all of your files by project. And they'll all be in stages one, two, three, four. Okay, so it's the best I can do for you guys. And there it is. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. So, memberships are here. I've added donator and member. The donator membership is just uh, you want to support the channel, help us grow. Member, you're going to get some exclusive video access. So, look out for the upcoming date and uh, check out the join now button for more information. Back to the video.